what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you're new to this channel, or you have not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and there's also a PayPal link in the info box below the video once it's rendered. But most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Sleeping Warrior, The Plain Truth, Ranty Flat Earth, and Chocolate Saying. Good to have you all. Yo, yo. I'm just waiting to be kicked. You won't be kicked now. I'm, <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm back, back door patrolling now. Yeah, so Arwin? Arwin's not here. Oh, is he gone? I think he, he dropped while I was arguing with him. I think he elf quit. Ah. Uh. Do we have your own blocks? Because if not, he can just join. This is a new hangout. Um, I'm pretty sure I put the link in Master B now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, would, I, I wanted to ask Arwin, was he going to show in the scientific method that there are two causes to the one effect? Because he has to manipulate one to cause the effect, right? So how would he manipulate one and then prove the other? And he, he have to make one a control. And obviously, he admits that he can't manipulate gravity. So then, the concession that he must have to make would be that if he can't prove gravity within the scientific method, then it's a story. But he's not in, Anthony, so he doesn't have to do it. Anthony, um, I, I kind of missed what's going on, but there does seem to be a lot of chat about this four called pendulum or something. Uh, can you explain what's been happening with that? I have no idea. Right, okay, well, I don't know what it is either, so it just seems to be people talking about it and referencing you, so... Foucault's pendulum is said to prove the rotation of the Earth, but it doesn't do any such thing. There we go. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Housekeeping, though? Have we yeah, done that do. today? Any signs of curvature? Don't all answer at once. <laughs> uh, no. No. no, no, no evidence of curvature. Axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? No. What about Bill Miller? Yeah, any signs of Bill uh, Miller? No evidence. Do you well, mean George Bill Miller or do you mean it. Brian Mullins? Cause it's not, I'm not quite sure. Not sure either. Well, George, George is in, so maybe he can join the panel and uh, tell us where he is. Yeah, George, you join. Rumpa says, Riley posted a video last night and then he deleted it. I have no idea. I don't know what you're talking about, me. Fair enough. Yeah, okay. Hello, John. John, hello. Come here. Come here. Good to have you. Tilly Willy! John. You move. Hello. Tilly Willy! What's Tilly up? Willy! What's up? It's just mute, Anthony. <laughs> yes. Hey, Tilly <laughs> <laughs> He's shining the dogs. <laughs> oh, what's that? Sorry, you can hear that. Hey, John. Good to what's have you. That? Sorry, John, I didn't realise that. I thought I'd muted myself. I'm sorry. That's okay. Anyway, where were we? Housekeeping. Any yes. signs of gravity? No, no signs uh, of gravity. Absolutely no signs whatsoever of gravity. There's only a sign gravity. of one for gravity. Which, density. Which one? All we can see. Just one. Take, which which one what? Take your pick. Whichever whichever side whichever one you want. <sighs> What's that? What about pressurized system next to a vacuum? That's what we had on the last two shows. 
You already had two shows. No. Yeah, this is show three. You're kidding me. No, no not at all. Oh, man, you're killing me, dude. We're having six today, mate. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Right. Uh, what about, uh, where were we? Uh, self-perpetuating molten iron core at the center of a presupposed spherical Earth. There's definitely no evidence of that, Nathan. None whatsoever. I bet you can't say that five times real quick. <laughs> what about the presupposition itself? Any signs of radius? Any scientific evidence of R? Sorry, sorry, Nathan, that's a negative as well. There's no signs whatsoever of any radius to the Earth. None. Uh, what about the distance to the sun? <laughs> this is to the sun. It's based on the transit of Venus, apparently, and partly to do with the transit of Mars and the presupposition or the assumption that Venus was the same size as Earth, according to uh, Hugens and uh, Cassini. And uh, apparently, apparently, um, what's his name? Jimmy is pulling the victim card and he thinks that we've misrepresented him. So on Monday, he's looking forward to joining the hangout and telling us that we've misrepresented him. So I don't worry, Jimmy. I'll have my video queued up with exactly what Ted, and you can tell us exactly where we misrepresented what you did. Excellent. I think that's pretty much it. I think that's in terms of the housekeeping, unless I've missed anything. Anybody? No. I don't no. think so. You did do a video, though, didn't you, Anthony? This morning, I believe. Side man down. <laughs> So Sly Sparking had a hangout apparently and then um, I got a caught clip of it um, from courtesy of Ranty and in it Sean Huff Fraud has been trying to tell people that it's plausible that somebody's managed to get 25,000 subs in 10 days and he underplayed it, he said it was 15,000 subs but if you look on Social Blade it says that it's um, I think it was 30,000 subs in the last two two weeks or 15,000 subs in the last 10 days. Well, either way, no Simon Dan is for her, for supposedly who? Simon Dan. the new hot thing of Flat Earth. Simon Dan? Yeah. No <laughs> Simon Dan. Oh, wait, wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> this, this moron did a hit piece on, like, Phuket Word. It was months ago, like, I don't know, three, four months ago. I was just perusing... Uh, videos and it popped up and I and I listened to the video uh, in between laughing out loud and I posted something to him you know to challenge him this dude couldn't tell the difference between a Bunsen burner and a beach ball it was it was it was it was that bad you're saying he's got 25,000 subscribers oh, 30, like 30, 36 36,000 subscribers Dude, he's got 25. Dude, he only had 125 when I commented. He only had 20, yeah. he only had, he had um, at the beginning of June. Well, Sean credited him with 15,000, he said, in the uh, hangout. Um, but it's actually 25 in the last two weeks, or 30,000, <laughs> 33,000 in the last 10, uh, no, two, just over two weeks. Look on Social Blade for the authority for that. You'll find that on Social Blade. I think it was like 13,000 in two days. What What are they? They hire in preschools? <laughs> I don't it's, know. It's painful. He, he's, he's claiming that he's uh, not bought any subs whatsoever or views. It's ridiculous. Have you listened to, have you watched any of his videos? Yeah, rubbish. Yeah, they're just, they're <laughs> responding to people like me. <laughs> yeah, they're responding to almost unknown YouTubers, less than a thousand subs in most cases. <laughs> Hey Simon, Unbel how you doing? Unbelievable. Oh, that's Simon, Dan, Simon. Hello, Tim Allen. Hello. We're gonna get sniped all hell now, aren't we? Uh, I'm gonna. Take this guy, Elmer Fudd's blushing. Well, listen, he had his video that he released last week. So apparently, 1.3 million views. <laughs> on, on what? <laughs> what did he do? On what? He debunked a gate. He debunked a gate. <laughs> he debunked what? A gate. <laughs> -A -T -E. oh, so funny. It's better than my. It's better than my folk arts video. 
<laughs> I still didn't get it. I, I still didn't get it. Well, that's a... He debunks. <laughs> there's another flat earther that's like opening and closing a gate, and he debunks whatever's being asserted uh, about I, the I, gate. I, I, Are you saying gate like G A T E? Yes. Yeah. Like, like my gate to my backyard. Yes. Yes. What in the world? Oh, it's very compelling. One point two million views, mate. You can't knock it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we just stepped wait, wait. off in the bizarro world. What in the world is going on there, people? Well, I think it's his personality well, that wins people over. Hello, SX Zero. Hello. Yeah, and gay haircuts as well. That wins people over. Well, the worst thing is, though, Sean Hufford has been presented in that it's plausible. And when, when he told Sly Sparkane about it, Sly's reaction was, who? And he was like, oh, Sly, man, Dan, you, you not heard, man? Side laying it on thick. Sly's like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's the kind of same kind of reaction that GeoStreamer had when somebody suggested that it might be GeoStreamer that was listening to the hangout that was being presented back through the uh, microphone. Nathan's got a little uh, music video that I made of, uh, of them doing it. The responses. Hello, Frank. Oh, we're getting trolled again to all hell. Hey, gods, you a real person? Yeah, it's me. Good to have you. I know, kicked off the panel. Oh, <sighs> uh, we going? Yeah, I might. I thought you were doing one work there, Ranty. No, Ranty's already been kicked, so I'm going to have to unfortunately start yet another hangout. Oh, so uh, okay. I'll, I'll I'll jump out. Yeah, you going to put on, a master beast? Yeah, it'll be a master beast. So yeah, check out master beast. <laughs> so what should you get? You sick? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Wife's out of the house. I can smoke indoors. No chance. She's too busy. Hey ho. Right, let's do this. Do you open some bees, Anthony? No, I'm in uh, Sefton Park in Liverpool. Okay. Right near, um, you know, Strawberry Fields. Strawberry Fields forever. Sure. Around the corner from there. Cool. Yeah. Any particular reason? Just family and friends? It's walking the dogs. It's the Westie Walk this week. So we're oh, out okay. with the Westies. Did you see any of the last two shows? Uh, I was listening to most of it. I was kind of in and out of signal, so I've been listening as much as I could and commenting periodically, but it's not been easy because I've got, I've had like, there's like 50 dogs all yapping about different things, so when they kick off in the background, I'm kind of watching my own three, stopping them for fighting. But, uh, yeah, I'm about half a mile away from um, Strawberry Fields forever. Doing well, covering my dead air that I'd normally have. Yeah. I'm just thinking, I'm just laughing at Simon Dan and how Sean's trying to persuade people that it's plausible that anybody in this little corner of the internet that we occupy called Flat Earth can get 35, not even like people like Dubai that resets his channel can get that 35,000 subs in less than, well, just over, I think it was 21 days. Go and look on Social Blade, you'll see it. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's crazy, crazy growth. I liked your video though. You showed In the, the gate video. Yeah, you showed your you showed your sources for buying subs. Say that again. <laughs> On your video that you did today, at the end of it, you showed yeah. like a site that you can buy subs from. I it was All I did was where do you buy? How do you buy subs on YouTube? And then that was the first result. I don't even know if it works. It's not an advert. It was just showing how you can do it. If, apparently. Okay. <clears throat> So make sure you go over to my channel and uh, check out Sean Hufford trying to trivialise and rationalise the possibility that anybody in Flat Earth can get 35,000 subs in like just over a fortnight. It's ludicrous. Yeah, if I'd have done that, do you think that Sean Hufford would be sucking my dick? No, he wouldn't. But it can be arranged, though, Sean. Uh, no need. I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how much it would cost, but it would probably be about 50 quid. God, do you have to? <laughs> do you want to play that I video? Just, I just find it, but... to be honest, I just find the double standards despicable because, like, if it was me that had got 35,000 subs and tried to plow, pass them off as, like, real and legit, they'd be all over that. They'd be all over it like a rash. Who? Simon and Dan. Who's that? Who? Chucking the dogs in the car. Simon and Dan. Who's that? Who? Simon and Dan. Who's that? Who? Simon and Dan. Who's that? 
<laughs> who is that who is that on that video uh, Sean uh, Buffett and Sly Sparkane yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Sly Sparkane Mr. Mr. Randomized Double Blind Placebo Controlled Experiment That's on the, one. the Spare Earth <laughs> That's exactly the one. I leveled that out, and it was like, you telling me I don't know the hypothesis for the Cavendish experiment? I was like, no, you didn't formulate a hypothesis for your experiment. What I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to drop from this call while I chuck the dogs in the car because we're getting ready to go, so I'll give you a buzz back in a bit on Skype. No worries. Now right. to Retro Bill, is it, for the Super Chat? Thank you very much. Limit, actually, the Limitless channel, uh, they admit that it's uh, they can buy views and stuff. Perhaps you could tell us, how much is it to get, like, I don't know, 10,000 <laughs> views or 10,000 subscribers? <laughs> you know, would you be able to put that in the side chat? <laughs> yeah, give us a rough estimation of how much Simon Dan's blown on his channel. <laughs> Just to have us take the mickey out of him. Yeah, you guys are sure, all yeah, fired up, man. <laughs> <laughs> what what the heck happened earlier, man? Got overrun with trolls, so Ranty got kicked out, and then the trolls just came in and kicked everybody out. So it was just Nathan, me against brother, several of the trolls. You're not sounding balls. very good, man. It's By the way, listen, if when the link show. gets sent, when the get link gets put public, I swear now, if anybody, do, if they don't speak within one second, they don't say something, they're getting kicked immediately. Immediately. So they have to speak when they join. So even if it's just say, it's me, I'm here, I'm alive, I'm real, fine. Yeah? But if you don't, if you go on mute, you're obviously here to snipe. I have to kick you. Nathan, do you catch, what's, what's up with you, man? You don't sound good. Me? I just got cold. I'm all right. Oh, uh, okay. I live. Right. Oh, yeah. So it also seems that there's a few people that are a bit upset with me for setting a Patreon account up. Which uh, I've lost about five subscribers. So <laughs> <laughs> is that so? The voting with the feet. Right. If you can chat amongst yourselves for two minutes, I'm going to make a cup of coffee. Then I'll put the link out. So I've got ca caffeine inside me. Okay. Okay, right, I've got the back door open. So unless like three join at once, should be all right. The back door is open. Randy, this door. family show. <laughs> You've got to watch your back door, mate. You'd... People try sneaking in all the time. Yeah, always got to guard the six, man. <laughs> So what have you been up to, John? Nothing, man. I just woke up just a little while ago and I jumped on. I thought this was, you know, the second show. I knew I missed the first show, but I couldn't. I didn't know what went on there, so I just popped in. And now you guys have already done two shows. Jeez, oh man, I can't get up that early, man. Can't do it. Well, we had the rumpus in. He was in before. We had Sly Spark Hain in before. Oh, you had Sly Spark Kane in? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled, spherical earth experiment guy. <laughs> That's the guy. That's the guy. The guy, oh, that will, that, the guy that will say to us that we're snipers and he won't allow us to have a link into his channel. But yeah, he can, he's free to come into this as, as he likes. And uh, yeah. But we're Did only you... allowed to talk to him from the side. Hey, next time he comes in, man, ask him the difference between grid and magnetic asthma. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd have been up earlier, you could have asked him yourself, mate. Oh, man. What you get for lying in bed? <laughs> Sorry about that. You're slacking, pal. Slacking. I know. Shamming <clears throat> you. I don't know. So what else is going on? That video that Nathan did yesterday. I was, I'll tell you what, man. I didn't know if I was going to make it. <laughs> I mean, I was literally rolling on the floor. My gut hurt so bad. Yeah, that, that video was hilarious. I, oh, man. 
Well, I don't know why they doubled down and tripled down and said that Gem Panda wasn't being fed when it's absolutely clear as day they're having a conversation. Who? Gem Panda. It was. Gem- oh, sorry, Geo Streber. Sorry, my mistake. My mistake. Geo Streber. You mean. Uh, uh, yeah. that's, that's Betty's bitch. It is. That's right. That's Betty Van Velsen's bitch. Really? <laughs> <laughs> she it was it was comical dude i mean this guy geo streamer a self-professed master's candidate in chemistry got whipped around by his short hairs right by betty just <laughs> clobbered you guys see that video yet no maybe well maybe he didn't have his uh his pals in the background on TeamSpeak. Oh, he was he was trying to appeal to him. Listen, when she busted him and then laughed in his face because he didn't know what a scientific hypothesis was, this guy immediately went, he, he flipped up his screen and started bombarding her with all these equations, right? And, and she's there, wait a second, equations aren't science. And he's there, what? Yes, 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 they are. She said, give me the equation for germ theory, right? This guy, this guy said, wait, he's trying to think of it, right? And then when he couldn't think of it, he yeah, started, he started hey, appealing. He started appealing to chat, some kind of micro IQ guy in chat. The, the, <laughs> he's supposed to be a biologist. He's like, shut up, shut her up. <laughs> <Where is> <laughs> It was hilarious, dude. You need to get that. You need to check that video out, man. Oh, yeah, could, could sounds like what we had it. earlier. So Rumpus was doing pretty much the same thing. What was he doing? Well, he presented a mathematical formula and told me that it was a hypothesis. And I said, well, give it me an alternate and null format. And then he spent 32 minutes not doing that. An equation for a hypothesis? Yeah, he said that's that's what all scientific <clears throat> hypotheses are. Hang on, didn't, yeah. he write, didn't he write the same one out for both? He did the same equation. Yeah. He wrote the same equation out for both. Wait a second, second, wait a second, wait a second. You're way ahead of the game here. That's tantamount to asking a neurosurgeon to show you a cerebellum, and he shows you a facultative anaerobe woodpecker. What in the world? <laughs> Hypotheses, they're not equations. Uh, and I missed that. Yeah, it's a shame. You missed it. Unbelievable, dude. What was his independent variable? The equal oh, sign? Th- he had three. So, again, on the, <laughs> I think it was the show previous, we wanted to explain that he had multiple independent variables. Two of them are held as controls, and once you validate one, then you introduce the other. Wait, wait, what, what was the equation? I don't have it in front of me. He was, he was talking about Cavendish. So he's saying that Cav- you've got three different Go independent variables. And he put what formula did he put up? I don't, I don't know. I, did, I, I, you don't I, know. Okay. I can't have. I, I didn't take a screen cap or anything. Sorry. Uh, okay. on, it was on last show though, so you can I can go and have a look. If you give me two that. seconds, I'll tell you. Hold on. Make sure you get the one where he repeats the same equation for this for the different... <laughs> right <laughs> for the independent etc. No wonder you guys are all jacked up, man. Uh, and I missed. I missed it. Well, I was on my own for most of it because everyone got kicked out. You were on your own with just Rumpus? Well, no. No, no. Slice Bar Kane. Oh, jeez. And uh, Milo. Not that I'm complaining. Oh, God. Uh, The Triple Crown, huh? So it's gravity (laughs) alternate hypothesis. So the alternate hypothesis is F equals G M1 M2 over R. Two. He put that as the hypothesis. Yeah. Where did he get G from? It's a constant, apparently. Yeah, but G is is the alleged result of the Cavendish experiment. Yeah, I tried how to, is it in there beforehand? I tried to ask him that too. Which is it, the cause or the effect? And he told, <laughs> told me I didn't understand. <laughs> and then he, he, oh, man, he formulated it, and he said um, he had if mass. 
as the independent variable. I said, so mass is the cause? And he said, no. I was like, but you've got mass as your independent variable. <laughs> it's like, no, it's just one of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, boy, I missed it. I missed it, man. Sorry about that. I, I, no, I get place. a screen grab, Nate. Get a screen grab and put it up. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, he had a lot of trouble just using what was it? What was it he was using? Was it Word or something? Something like that. Very complicated yeah. stuff. He, he was struggling to use that. If I send it to you, Ranty, can you display it? Yeah. But I won't be able to watch the back door though. Uh... Yeah, it's okay. I'll I'll bring it up. <laughs> I think Simon's going to be doing a, a video about us today as well. So he said. Oh yeah. Yeah, he wants to bet his channel against our channels. Oh, I can't share it. I can only share it the audience. That's fine. We can watch. Can you watch watch it, John, from the uh, from the YouTube page? Hold on one second. <clears throat> so you want me to go to the last? Uh, no, no, no. Just just join the live stream on YouTube. The live Nathan, stream. Nathan, Nathan, open nineteen eighty, and he'll be live. Oh, he he can't show it in the Hangout. Yeah, it's, for some reason, it doesn't like to find my photo viewer in the Google Hangout application to present it. So if I've ever got a photo for some reason, I can't share it in the Hangout. I don't know why. Hey, hold on. Oh. But if, yeah, if you get to the live show, you can see his alternate and his null. Oh. Did we get a value the the limitless <coughs> channel? Did you manage to find out how much it costs for those subscribers and views? Yeah, if you, you can know. give us an estimation, limitless and channel, just roughly, how much would it cost to go from less than a thousand subs to thirty six thousand subs? All right, I'm on it. Let me maximize this a little bit so I can see it. <laughs> so he's got he's got to say, he's got two formulas for the alternative hypothesis and now this is this uh, I, I'm speechless. Unbelievable! What the heck? Zero equals GM. <laughs> oh my god. Could we get like let's get somebody that's uh let's call a college professor. Let's do a Robert Bassano call a college professor. Get a physics professor in here. He'd see that, he'd die from deer tear jerking belly laugher syndrome, dude. Preposterous. But that's how they're all formulated according to Rumpus. That's science right there. Not mathematics. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> I don't know, dudes. I'm gonna have to take a vacation from this because it this is it, it, it's not even stupid. Yeah, it's laughable. But as I say, if you've got enough of them saying the same thing, they class that as a win. A win? Yeah. Until uh, Milo and Rumpus start arguing about whether or not an independent variable is independent or not. And Milo's arguing <laughs> did, they start, that, did they start arguing? Yeah, he's arguing <laughs> that mass is the independent variable, and Rumpus is saying, "No, there's three. <laughs> Priceless, man! And that's what, what video is that? First or second one? I think it's the second one. Four, two, one. Yeah, I got a lot to look forward to after this hangout. Then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was quite good fun. Is it as funny as the Geo Streamer last night, dude? You killed me, man. Well, that was your idea, so you, I can't really take credit for it because you came up with a, some some script ideas, which I robbed quite a lot of. So I would, I would credit that mostly to you, actually. <laughs> yeah, but you, you deviated a bit, but that's okay, man. I like the ad lib. It was hilarious. 
unbelievable. Geo, Geo, this is sound. I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that come across? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> really places. It's all good. Oh, brother. So, where's all the trolls gone? The link is public. Where's Anthony? Uh, he's on Skype. Shall I try him? I think he's probably driving now. Can give him a go, though. Oh, uh, he's going on vacation. No, I think he's just taking the dogs for a walk. <clears throat> See if I can get him. In the middle of a show? Yeah. He, he got his priorities answer. all out of whack. Now, I have heard on the grapevine about this Sam Undam. I've heard that apparently Yo. YouTube Hello. are putting him on recommendations. Yeah. Say that again, Renty. What? Say that again. I said I've heard on the grapevine by a few different people that Simon Dan is apparently being uh, promoted by YouTube, as in they're coming up. He's coming up in the recommendations in their feeds, and this is this, this is to do with the, his spike in um, subscribers, apparently. Well, people come off on YouTube anyway. That doesn't mean anything. I know, but I find it that. YouTube were announcing just a couple of weeks ago that there was a lot of, uh, in their opinion, uh, fake news going around and how could they combat that? So obviously it seems to me that it might be a little bit the promoting people that are trying to promote no, I th science. I think, I, think, I think you're overestimating the value of Simon Dan. I don't think he'd be the one I, they picked. I know that. I know that. He's a gimp and nobody ever really watches his stuff anyway. He's shit. Sorry, can well, I just respond? Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Can I just respond to George? Is Riley here and ready to talk? Yes, George. Feel free to join. Well, George I'm, I'm who? Here, but I'm not really able to talk that much because I'm like, well, I'm in and out of signal because I'm where I am. But sure, George, if you can show the uh, the current science for the def uh, the distance to the moon or to the sun and how they got it, sure, join. Let's have a look and see what you got. George who? Netting you. You're He's kidding the one that me. talks in anagrams. He's the one that said Bill Miller. Oh, you got so you guys are still entertaining this. Yeah, of course, because he's a liar. Why would we not entertain it? You don't give platform to scumbags. I do. But that's well, just a, it's not I was going to say, show. what's Nathan doing then? I was going to say, that's, that's yeah. my whole gig. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's not the job. So, so by that definition, me, that. Ranty, and John must all be scumbags. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Jeremy Kyle of Flat Earth, this. No, no, that, that's when the rumpus joins. You've got rumpus with no teeth, and you've got Sly that's been banging his daughter or something stupid like that, and then all the other retards that join, and we're the ones that are putting up with it. What's John Hawkins, feel thought, free yeah. to join and what? tell us how you feel an equatorial mount proves you're on a sphere. And I'll point out where your presupposition lies. Feel free to join. Yeah. And well, the other thing to remember is, right, if you're, in, if you're in Australia at the minute, right, you're in winter. So at midnight, you're telling me that the sun is underneath your ass? Really? Aye. Why has it all gone quiet? I don't get it. Like, Probably two... because Arwen's not talking about double forces and one experiment. Hey. Oh, well, you, so... you and Arwen were getting at it, weren't you, Nate, before? Not really. I thought Nathan put up a full fight. I don't know why he let Arwen get away with so much nonsense if it was rumpus. But Nathan would be... He'd have kicked him hours ago. He puts a spell on they... people. Oh, I think Nathan really? fancies <laughs> I think he has spell. a wand in his he has a wand in his hand and he, he's casting a spell as he's talking to you. <laughs> I, I think Nathan, I think Nathan fancies Arwin because anybody else he'd have kicked him ages ago. I'm in secretly in love with Arwin. Yeah, yeah it, is. it must be. It is. I confess. <laughs> all these ca <laughs> apparently Stiggy says all these cowards in one panel. Well, join the join the debate. Walk on in. We're not being cowardly. Yeah. We're open. We're literally an open door for you to come and talk to us. We're not being the ones being cowards. 
if anything, we're the ones inviting people to come and challenge us. We're not like Sly that you won't. You you need to be um, talking to him in the side chat like you are, Stiggy. Just jump on the panel, click the link, and you come. Put your gob where your mouth is. Or where your is fingers that Stiggy? are. What, what, what's Stiggy's name? Stiggy Van Vandrastrikeen. He's a flat earther. Yeah. He makes good videos. I, he made a really good video, and I'm sure I shared it about a week ago. Sticky's a oh, good well. guy. I got it wrong again. Apparently, he was apparently he was talking about the Globians. There you uh. go. Told you the Globians are cowards. <laughs> yeah, they're all cowards, and none of them can tell the truth. None of them can ever concede any points. And you've got Sean Huffroad that's telling everybody that it's reasonable that somebody within the flat Earth scene. Has managed to get thirty thousand subs in the last two weeks or whatever it is. It's ridiculous, Sean. If I was to do that, the level of hypocrisy and, and unbiased here is unbelievable. You'd just rip me a new bottom hole, and you would—you know you would. But why is it different for him? Because they're not fake when it's part of the fake world of heliocentricity, you know. No, they're, all, they're only real. fake when it's does. It's fake when it's okay. us. It's... <laughs> Well, yeah. look at it another way, yeah. If all right, let's just suppose for a moment that they're not fake subs, right? Let's suppose that there's people that have been telling me that this guy is being promoted by YouTube and he's appearing I'd rather in their believe feeds, in that. right? Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if this is true, right, and they are genuinely real subs with real views, real comments, real people that are going to keep coming back to his channel, then this is very dangerous for flat Earth as a whole and for the people that are actually in in it. So if he does oh, a video, really? let's say, against Mark you. Sargent, and he does a video against Mark Sargent and it becomes very popular and he gets 200,000 uh, views on it, then whenever you look, search, look. search for Mark Sargent, if they have genuine views and he has genuine subscribers, that guy's nonsense will be at the top of the search. Yeah, box. but there's only people like Arwin that will believe it and accept it. Everybody else that, that knows anything about the, the movement itself will realise that this is just nonsense. Like all of his videos, I mean, look at it. He's, he's attacking like low hanging fruit, as Tim would describe it, and he's getting 1.3 million views on it. Come on. Well, all I'm saying is we don't know what the guy's intentions are, who's supporting him, who's promoting him, why he has been promoted by YouTube, what his intentions are going down the line, and what his future, what he could potentially be doing to flat earthers and their reputations by his popularity. And the way he well, does mention other people in his videos. What flat earthers do you know that have reputations though? It doesn't matter because if you go searching for anybody, right? I mean, it's like if you go searching for me, the Limitless channel who bought people to watch their crap, uh, when you search Ranty Flat Earth, his is one of the top videos. And essentially, he will be doing a, a, a rebuttal this week saying that he was wrong. Uh, you know, he shouldn't have done it. I was blah, 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 blah. But that still won't alter the fact that whoever has searched for me in the past, what, month or so, will have come across that video first. And if their first impression of me is that I'm a liar and I'm a fraud and I'm doing CGI stuff, then that is the impression that they will stick with and they'll just move on to the next person. So essentially, they can be very dangerous. People like that who can do things like that are very, very dangerous to other channels. Not really. Just I don't see that at all. I see the ones that are more dangerous are the ones that can actually provide when challenged and for example somebody that can produce evidence when requested are. you'd be surprised how fickle people are trust me you oh, know yeah, you've been I, I your entire fickle. life you heard about flat earth go and check mark Sargent out you go and click the first thing that comes up mark Sargent's this that and the other and the next thing you're yeah, right okay i can't be bothered looking at flat earth anymore yeah and that's how it would work that is genuinely how it would work and we'd be on to the next one and the next one sean hawkins hello hello sean. hello good to have you good to be here so, do you want to tell us how you feel an equatorial mount proves we live on a sphere? Because it was designed to work on a sphere. It was designed to work on a spinning ball. And it works anywhere on that spinning ball flawlessly. With or without a computer mount. The computer mount just, makes, you, it conven just makes it convenient. How are you going to prove it's a ball? Hey, to hold, on, hold on, hold on. Hey, hey, SX. How you doing, SX? Good to have you. A computer mount is only really good. Hey George, how you doing? For finding things quickly and keeping them centered for photography. That's no, what a computer God. mount is for. Hey George. Now you can hand crank an equatorial telescope mount and keep anybody, any, anybody. Hello. 
Any hello? anything in the heavens hello? centered. Hello, hello. I'm here. Hand. Now it doesn't matter where it is. If you can see it, you have doing it manually. You have to see the object. But if there's a computer involved, it will automatically track that object flawlessly and keep it back in view when it comes up around the horizon. Now well, explain was, to me uh, on a flat was, earth. Was, I'm, I'm not done on a flat earth that's flat. That the all the all the heavenly bodies spin in a circle in a perfect circle centered over the North Pole. Explain to me how when you go off center to the North Pole, you do not see oval or sniper, elliptical star, star trails because that's exactly what you'd see looking off center to a circle. When you look, when you prove look to, off prove to me you live in a ball, off oh, perpendicularity at an ball, angle to a circle, you get an oval, and that's not what we see in real life. Also, so you want an equatorial to telescope mount only tracks in one axis. Explain to me how you can track an oval in one axis. So which question do you want us to answer first? Because you've just literally waffled off about five. Well, why should we explain? Well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. It starts with your assertion. It starts with your assertion, sir. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, you're not nervous here. Uh, yeah. Not really. Listen, hold on. Let's get some ground rules. Stop, number. stop, 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 stop. Let's get some ground rules. One person at a time, please. Right. Let me start with the, the, your assertion. Your assertion was that it only works on a ball. Prove that it's a ball, and then I'll give you that it only works on a ball. That's your assertion. Before we get to our explanation, because it was designed to work on a ball. And right. any three D model, that any, any 3D right. model that you can present that 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 represents the reality that you believe in, whether bitch. it's a ball Earth or a flat Earth, the equatorial telescope mount fails miserably. So Slice prove it's a ball, then, and then we'll get you the telescope. That. Or what? Prove it's a ball, and we'll give you that your telescope works. Because it was designed to work on a ball, and it works. It only on works on a sphere. planet that we live on. It's a sphere, and then we'll give you that your telescope does what you say. No, it, it only works on a sphere, and as it works, therefore we're on a sphere. Oh, so it's yeah. an affirming the it's consequent a... formological fallacy, then. Yeah. Is that correct? Prove that it's a sphere, and you can have it. Right. So this is the... Oh, God, we're getting trolled to all hell again. Marvelous. It only works because it's presupposing a ball. Exactly. No, it only works because it was designed to work on that geometry. Yeah. So you're telling me that there's no computer system that would allow an equatorial mount to do the same thing on a plane? Not in one axis. Which is so only what's the, the, axis the question? Only one axis that travels on. The axis that is aligned parallel to the, to the rotation of the Earth. It's not, it's not one axis, though, is it? It's two axes no, that are doing it, so that's wrong for a start. You've got that. Have you, it has, it has, it has, meant, it has multiple axes on the, on the mechanism itself, but once you set those, those multiple axes on us, because you have to move them to, get to, the teles, to, to make the telescope point to a star or the sun or the moon, sure. but once you get well, it set, gotta, it only rotates on speed. one axis. The axis that is parallel sphere, to the to rotation of the planet, works the north and the south pole. Have you tested it on a flat plane, though? They have. To know that it doesn't work? The geometry yes. wouldn't work. Yes. You can do that, math prove that mathematically. It. They tested so, it. Uh, uh, prove uh, it's a sphere B &B. for your presupposition well, to block be proven. For block. block for block had a hangout, and he showed how his equatorial telescope mount tracks works on, works on a flat Earth, but he only put it on the North Pole. And he said, I challenge anybody to go out and prove to me on a 3D, on, in 3D, mo on CGI, Blender or whatever, that it will not work. And they fucking went on a hangout, live hangout, right then. Proved him wrong. And that, that piece of work wouldn't even go and click, open up another tab to click and watch him, watch his paradigm being destroyed. Scared. Yeah, yeah we're, absolutely. We're, scared. we're quivering in our boots. Is this scientific evidence? This is absolute. Scientific. All right, share my screen, Nathan. 
It's absolute scientific evidence. All Go right. watch the video. You're on. Watch the hangout. You're up. <laughs> All right. Natural when phenomena tool, observed, please. When you, when you invent a tool that works on natural the natural phenomena observed, please. You have no no choice. Natural Sean. phenomena observed, Sean. please. Let me just explain what's going on, Sean. He's just asked you if this is scientific evidence. You responded in the affirmative. Now he's going to go through how scientific it really is. Okay, go ahead. Natural phenomena observed, please. Rumpus, did you notice the word natural there? Well, he's an idiot. We know quantum rays is an idiot. He's demonstrating he's an idiot here. Who is? It should be physical phenomenon. He's put the wrong natural word in. He's chosen, he's chosen a word. That doesn't make it right. It's physical, dude. It works physically. Yeah, no, but he's put the word natural, and Nathan's got this obsession with natural not being something that happens physical. So he doesn't um, believe in vacuums and things, even though you can have them in trees. They've got this strange idea that they've included the word natural, and, they, and they're getting that from nowhere. They just decide, we'll make it natural, so we'll exclude all the man-made things. You can't do experiments on vacuums. You can't do, you know, you couldn't create the television because you wouldn't have been able to do experiments on cathode ray tubes or vacuums or anything man-made. And apparently you can't even use a torsion bar to measure force because that's man-made. They're denying yeah. that 99% of all known science. These are science and reality deniers. I mean, can you read? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Rumpus, can you read okay. the paragraph that's highlighted for me, please? Uh... Nathan, these are documents yeah, well, he's, he's, that quantum eraser produce. Hey, Rumpus. Physical, so it's these... physical and Rumpus. natural. Rumpus. Hold on, Rumpus. I'm in the middle of answering a question, George. Jesus. Right. So, um, the, yes, it says physical. There you go, physical and natural world. So it includes both of them. So he's just definitely brought out the definition of natural world, but there's still the definition of physical world. This guy's an idiot. He doesn't even understand English. <laughs> what a moron. Rumpus, you need to understand quantum eraser is famous for doctoring up and creating <laughs> from a, from a demonstrated fire. Really look, good for cutting and pasting. Look, 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 hold on. Can you let physical, George physical, speak? Rumpus, can, Rumpus, can, can you let George speak? Even by his own definition. Can you let George speak, please? Rumpus. Can you let George Even speak? Even by his own quote. Rumpus, wrong. one more time, then you're getting kicked out. Just let George okay. speak. I can speak now? Hopefully. Do you want me to leave you talking, okay. George? <laughs> Rumpus, please. Just okay. give, me, give me a minute. This is the same stuff that Quantum Eraser pulled on me on the Coriolis effect. He lifted bullet points off a book, doctored them up, added his own words to give it his own meaning. He has never posted any original documents or any copies of original documents. I tried to do this sort of thing when we were discussing the mel or, or tried to get a, a document uh, on... Um, uh, ethical standards of engineers and Nathan wouldn't let me go to my site to get it and then I ended up finding a document that was posted by the University of Washington and if you went to the bottom it said reprinted by permission of the NCWES which is the National Council of I Examiners for Engineers and Surveyors Whereas Quantum Eraser is allowed to put up BS that he creates. He emphasizes words that are not in the original documents. In fact, there are no original documents that he posts. These are things that he has created to give the meaning that he wants. He lifts bullet points off documents without reading the whole document. And, he and if you go to the original document, you will find that the meaning has been completely twisted by quantum, quantum eraser. Like on the Coriolis effect, if he goes to this book that he so much brandished around as being authoritative by Douglas Seeger on the introduction to ocean sciences, you will find in there nowhere in the bullet points that he lifted, which were out of the CC12s, which are critical concepts 12 of that book, and he was saying, trying to make it sound like the atmosphere, 
the earth turns independently of the atmosphere. And that's not what the book said at all in the context. It was saying that the atmosphere as a whole rotates at the same speed as the surface of the earth, but there can be air masses within the atmosphere that act independently and are subjected to the Coriolis effect. But the whole atmosphere as it's as a whole, taken in its entirety, rotates with the surface of the Earth at the same rate as the surface of the Earth. I don't understand, George. And if that's the case, the sorry, way, can I just okay? ask George a quick question, and then hopefully you'll give John an opportunity to respond. But my quick question is, if they're rotating together, then it's not Coriolis. You have separate reference frames in the Coriolis effect, regardless of Earth-based or not. That is the Coriolis, no, separate. No, no, sorry, no, I hadn't no, quite, hadn't no, quite no. finished. The Earth... I'm, hadn't the quite finished. Hadn't plane. quite finished, George. It I made sure you masses. had enough air to answer your question and air as much as you liked. I've got about five seconds out of you. Thank you. So, okay. the Coriolis effect, regardless of whether it's Earth-based, just the Coriolis effect, forget what it's in reference to, specifically is about having two separate reference frames. If we don't that have... Uh, right. Thank you for... Right confirming what I'm saying before I've said it. Thank you, George. Yes, two separate reference frames in order to achieve the Coriolis effect. That, by definition, is the Coriolis effect. So, if you are asserting that we don't have separate reference frames, why would we have any Coriolis effect? I never said that. I said you can have independent masses of air within the atmosphere that act independently of the atmosphere in its entirety. So you have two reference frames. You have an observer standing on the surface of the Earth, and you have a <clears throat> reference frame on these air masses that act independently. And, uh, and uh, Nathan, can you just read what Ali B's just said in the side chat, literally just now? He's just put, uh, must be a nightmare for pilots dodging these rogue pockets of atmosphere. Does that oh, make wind. sense to you there, George? Well, they are. You, you have you're shear wind. force. You're not familiar with wind, aren't you, Ranty? No, no, rogue pockets. You're, you're, of... de you're denying wind. it. It's called wind. wind. Rogue pockets Sorry, of so atmosphere. let me get this straight. So the bullet deflection is caused by wind. Not no. Not the bullet deflection. We're talking about no. air deflection. <laughs> a bullet deflection, a bullet trajectory is independent <laughs> of the atmosphere. Yeah. And Coriolis. Sorry, when it well, was described. First, sorry, that, just, just let me get it clear. Order, sorry, course, sorry, George. Be, uh, just let me get it clear. When it was ex uh, explained in the videos that I've watched on bullets that are asserted to be moved, it's because the Earth is moving underneath the bullet, according to the definition cited in those videos. They say the Earth continues to rotate underneath the bullet while it travels no, through this. No. Sorry, I hadn't quite finished. You're <clears throat> doing a bit of a rumpus, George. So it's okay. asserted that the bullet strays because of a Coriolis effect when it leaves the earth which continues to turn underneath that reference frame that's why you have a deflection now you're saying that the reference frame it travels through and according to them causes the deflection isn't a separate reference frame is that correct I did not say that so is it a, so, so <laughs> yeah. just let me get a concise answer from you George is the earth and atmosphere separate reference frames or one reference frame Really? You can consider it a single reference frame. So how do we have the Coriolis effect then? Because there are masses of... There, okay. What, wind? Wind, George? What, because of wind? A, Sorry, a, what were you going to say, George? What were you going to say? Masses what, what of what? What are we talking about here? What were you going to say, George? Pockets of what? I was gonna, wind? I was going to say, yes, if you have a ballistic projectile, like going from a gun... Uh, um, or a, a holitzer uh, gun, a rifle, or whatever, that is a reference yeah. frame that is independent of the atmosphere as a whole and the Earth as a whole. The atmosphere and the Earth can be considered as a single reference frame, and that projectile is another reference frame. Correct. Question. Sorry, the projectile is the thing that's going to be deflected according to the point of view of the observer. It's no, not a reference. No, no, no. Sorry, reference, I hadn't finished again, no, George. Again, I got halfway through a sentence, a... and now you're talking again. The bullet is the thing we're observing. The reference frame 
is the roundabout and the air, or the earth and the atmosphere, not the bullet. The bullet deflects with respect to an observer on the surface of the earth or traveling with the atmosphere as a whole to someone on the surface that bullet appears to deflect whereas from the bullet's point of view its reference frame it's going in a straight line yes i understand that the bullet's traveling in a straight line but from your point it's deflected because it's no longer in its original reference frame when it was attached to the earth in the gun correct yes yes so it it's so the, so let me get it clear so let me get it clear it is when leaving the gun in a separate reference frame then at the point it's at the point it leaves the muzzle of the gun it's in its own reference frame so it's right. in a separate no, sorry separate. so it's in a separate reference frame to the earth spinning underneath exactly correct. as correct. exactly correct. as described in the coriolis effect so we have separate reference frames the atmosphere and the earth exactly as i asserted no the atmosphere and the earth are saying rumpus i'm not no, talking no, to you no no the atmosphere is attached to the earth oh so why do we get the coriolis effect then george <laughs> again i'm back to being confused because you've just gone through it step by step with me and we've established that the reason it deflects is because of when it leaves the gun it goes into a separate reference frame now you're saying that it's attached so I'm a bit confused, George. No, I did not say that. Did not say I that. said the bullet Rumpus. is in its own Rumpus. reference frame, traveling in a straight line through the atmosphere. The atmosphere is attached to the Earth in a rotating reference frame. So there are Sorry, two if, reference it's a, if it's attached. The bullet in its own trajectory, which is in a straight line in its reference frame, and then the atmosphere in general as a whole appears to be attached to the earth not in general and, and as sorry, a whole and, and appears, again, I'm, three I'm separate things back to being there, confused. and all of them are bullshit I'm, I'm back to being confused if it's leaving okay. the gun confused. and in the same reference frame there is no deflection george if i am sorry say what again if it leaves the gun and is in the same reference frame with the of atmosphere what? Ex I hadn't finished. I hadn't finished, George. If you could okay. let me finish a single sentence, you might find out. According oh, yeah. to you, they are the same reference frame: the atmosphere and the Earth. If that no, is the I did not say that. No, no, no. He said atmosphere. That's correct, George. He said atmosphere and the Earth. Oh, you misheard him. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm. 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 I'm yeah, watching. Correct. He was correct. Okay. Moron. Yes, the atmosphere and the Earth are the same <laughs> reference frame. The bullet trajectory the bullet projectile <sighs> is in a reference frame separate from the earth and the atmosphere well, correct that's two different things you can't have it be in the same reference frame and in a different reference frame that's double speak it's not I never claimed it rumpus no, you have got one more chance to shut your mouth right, rumpus right. rumpus one more time i'm talking to okay. george Nathan, yeah, maybe you should say it slow doing for him. A straw man. I don't so, think he's getting I'll it. say it nice and slow for George. You're, you're, yes, I think you're, you're right. Him. I'll try it one more time, nice and slow. In okay, order to have in, or, in order to have the Coriolis effect, we must have two separate yeah. reference frames so that we can see the bullet deflect. If there is not two separate reference frame, there is no deflection to see. So when the bullet leaves the gun, it must be in a separate reference frame in order to see any deflection. Correct. So, so we have a separate reference frame, the atmosphere. No, it's the same as the Earth. So then we don't see a deflection because it's not leaving the reference frame. The bullet leaves the Earth atmosphere reference frame to have its own reference frame. Therefore, you've got two reference frames. Sorry, the it leaves the Earth atmosphere reference frame. The Earth and the atmosphere are in the same reference frame, except when why you have... I, why am I now having this conversation with Rumpus? Oh. I was talking to George. Okay, I think a critical point that you're missing here, Nathan, is the bullet is inside the gun. We're talking before it gets shot and leaves the muzzle of the gun. The earth, the atmosphere, the gun are in the same rotating reference frame. And the bullets start off with. No, no, okay. rumpus, please. So let me just collect some clarity, George. So everything, the gun, the atmosphere, everything is all in one 
reference frame. The bullet as well. Before, rumpus, rumpus fails, right, it's yeah, time yeah, to kick the rumpus out. He just can't contain himself. Bye-bye, really? Rumpus. Yet another time get... you can't keep your mouth shut. Bye, Rumpus. So, it's all one reference frame, right, George? According to you. Before the bullet exits the muscle, it's all in one reference frame. Well, it's attached to the Earth, so it's attached to the Earth's spinning reference frame. Yes, and it is... Don't kick me. Okay, just for simplification, let's say we're at the equator, okay? Now, we all agree that in the spherical Earth model, the Earth spins at the equator with a tangential velocity of about 1,035 miles per hour. No, we don't all agree on that. Absolutely not. Why would you assert such utter crap? Well, I'm trying to explain the Coriolis effect to you. And I don't need Coriolis a spinning effect. Earth to understand oh, Coriolis. I can have it explained with a roundabout. You sit on a roundabout, it spins. You throw the ball, and because it's no longer attached to the spinning roundabout, from your position on the roundabout, it looks like it deflects. Although it Correct. continues in a straight line in its separate reference frame, the atmosphere. Correct. Now, you're saying that the atmosphere is attached to the roundabout. The roundabout being the Earth, yes. So if it's attached, when you let go of the ball, it's in the same reference frame, George. No, it's acting independently. Yeah, because if it's in the same no. reference frame, no, you don't assuming, get... You're it. assuming that the atmosphere is carrying the projectile, which it doesn't. Oh, sorry. It's so in free flight. It's in what we call free flight. It's yeah, through the, through free of flight, the atmosphere. Free flight through the separate reference frame, which is why we see the deflection. Correct? Yes. So we have a separate reference frame, George. Yes, the Earth and the atmosphere. Excellent. So the Earth and the atmosphere the are two separate reference frames, George. That's what I just said. The no, you continually asserted <laughs> that they were attached, that they were one. Are you that stupid and senile that you can't remember what you said two minutes ago? No, I haven't been inconsistent. You said they were attached. Now, after oh, dragging it out me. of you, you're now conceding that they are separate, George. So, do what, we have a firm no, concession? Let's step back. What is attached? Do we have a firm concession that in order for the Coriolis effect to exist, the bullet must travel into a separate reference frame? Take your time, George. The atmosphere and the Earth are attached is a same rotating reference frame. Then we don't have any Coriolis effect, George. If the ball is being thrown on a roundabout, but the atmosphere is travelling with the roundabout, it doesn't go into a separate reference frame. Therefore, you see no deflection, George. That's the antithesis of the Coriolis no, effect. No, you're, no you're, you're, you're confusing. The no, I'm not confused. The Coriolis <laughs> effect is very simple to understand. In order for it to be there, you need two separate reference frames. It's very I clear. Said you have two refer separate reference frames. You've got the roundabout with your atmosphere as one reference frame. It's no, the atmosphere doesn't carry along with the roundabout. What kind of a dingbat are you? How many roundabouts have you seen with force fields carrying their atmosphere in a circle? Well, of course a roundabout can't do that. Right, you absolute <laughs> buffoon of an idiot. So we don't have two... Then, George, we have one, because every roundabout has a force field around it with its own atmosphere that's the same reference frame as the spinning roundabout, you dingbat. Is that right? No, no, you're the one that's conf uh, yeah. obfuscating this thing. Forget about the roundabout. Right. We're talking about the Coriolis effect on the Earth. No, we the Coriolis, Coriolis effect is, is the Coriolis effect. Doesn't matter what it's on. In order to have a Coriolis effect, George, why am I having to school you, old git? Why don't you know what the Coriolis effect is? Two separate reference frames are needed. Coriolis. Take a, 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 a step back. It Take is a, a step back. It is a what are you talking about? Ball. Are you talking about like a, a merry-go-round or what you're calling a roundabout on a playground? Or are we talking about the Earth? I'm talking about the Coriolis effect. Yes. Yes. But... And in order to have a Coriolis effect, George, in order for it to exist, you have to have two separate reference frames. What are you talking about here? Are we going to talk about a roundabout all over or are we going to talk about the Earth? George, the Coriolis effect is an effect that is regardless of Earth. It exists. It's real. 
You don't need an earth yeah. to explain the Coriolis effect. Yeah, if you have two separate, if you have a rotating and a non-rotating reference frame, yeah, you, you Shut have a Coriolis up. effect. Shut up, George. I hadn't finished speaking. You're very rude. In order to have... <laughs> you're doing it again. In order to have a Coriolis effect, you must have two reference frames. If you don't, then you don't have a Coriolis effect. Okay, I agree with that. So, in order for the bullet to be subject to a Coriolis effect, you must have the Earth as one reference frame and the atmosphere as the other, George. No, no, no. Well, then you don't have a Coriolis effect. If you don't have separate reference frames, that's what the Coriolis effect is, George. Why is this taking so long to drum into you that that is the Coriolis effect? The effect of deflection caused by no, two see, separate you're, reference you're, frames. No, you're you're mixing up the fact that the bullet, when it leaves the gun, the muzzle of a gun, that it's somehow attached to the ref, uh, to a reference frame to the atmosphere, and that is false. That is totally incorrect. The bullet, the projectile, acts independent of the atmosphere. It's in its own reference frame that has nothing to do with the atmosphere. Really? So it doesn't travel through the atmosphere at all? Yes, it does. So it has everything to do with the atmosphere then, George? No, no. Okay, take a roundabout. <laughs> take a child's uh, merry-go-round. Uh, you take a ball, you're at the center of the merry-go-round. It's spinning. You take a ball, you roll it outward. To a person standing on the merry-go-round, on the surface of the merry-go-round, it looks like it curves, but with respect no, to the ball... wrong. If you roll a ball on a roundabout whilst looking at it, and it is still in contact with the roundabout, it travels in a straight line from your position and in actuality. If you roll it on the roundabout, then you will not see any Coriolis effect because you are doing it in a single reference frame, you idiot. No, no, I'm not doing it in a single. There's two reference Yeah. The reference frame is the roundabout and the atmosphere is a separate reference frame. If you roll the ball on the roundabout, it remains in the same reference frame, George. No, the in the case of a roundabout, you don't even have to worry about the atmosphere. The atmosphere is independent. It's, it's a third entity that you don't even worry about. You, you throw a ball on a roundabout. It goes out on a straight line from the center of the roundabout out. It's in its reference frame and the roundabout is its own reference frame. The atmosphere has nothing to do with it. Sorry, it went into the atmosphere, George. Yeah, so what? Well, that was the separate reference frame. It's a third reference frame. Sorry, what's the second reference frame then? First reference frame is the... No, ball the second. Try to open your ears. Are you deaf? Is, is your age causing you to lose hearing? Not the first. The first would be the roundabout. I would okay, assert... The 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 I would assert... The shut your mouth. I would assert that the second is the atmosphere. You're saying the third is the atmosphere. So tell me what the second is. The ball. The ball's not a reference frame. Yes, it is. It has the a reference frame. The ball is a frame. ball. It's, it's the out. thing that's going to be deflected when traveling in the second reference frame. It's the thing you're observing being deflected as a result of its traveling through the second reference frame. It's not a reference frame in and of itself, you idiot. Yes, it is. No, you're the idiot. Sorry. God, you're... Are you serious? You're telling me a ball yeah, is, a, is a reference yeah, frame? Yeah, I'm very serious. No, you don't understand the Coriolis effect. You're an idiot. No, I <laughs> mean, hardly. And yes, you are. And you're an moron. idiot. Get him out of here. Oh, John, you're, you're, you're an God, idiot. God, you're a lightweight. God, My God. God. I got a video of George giving his dog the chili willy. Oh, get lost, P. Mars. You're, you're a disgusting human being. If even that. Really? Says the man who tried to ruin another man's career by contacting the people who gave him his license and questioning his integrity. Is that right, George? He's a disgusting human being, is he? Even though you put somebody's career at risk by contacting their license supplier. Yeah, you are total garbage, George. You are a disgusting human being, and you have lied through your back teeth about things no, that I happened have in the aftermath. Hey, you know what the elephant in the room here is? You being a lying sack of shit? Yeah, it's not really an elephant. Everybody knows that you're a lying sack of shit, George. We all look at you with disdain. Well, I don't give a damn. Well, that's fine by me, but I am literally disgusted by you. I'm holding back sick whilst These talking to you. Earthers. You're all a bunch of nutcases. Really, that's a great position to be in. And you ballers are all liars. Every last one of you. 
Yeah, over the last week, we've shown a whole bunch of your gaggle of idiots to be complete disingenuous liars, George. You're one of them, yeah? With your three-day-old comments that you claim to have spread all over the place about Bill Miller. Any signs of Bill Miller, by the way, George? Where is this Bill Miller character? Apparently, he's a very prevalent flat earther that none of us have heard of. I never said he's prevalent. Oh, right. Just nobody's heard of him then. So why would you reference him if nobody's yeah, heard of him? Have, have you heard of, um, what is uh, Let's just stick to Bill Miller. Don't try and ham-handedly segue away from your disingenuous lies, George. It yeah, you are Nathan. people that it was BM. That was BM referencing BM in a thread about uh, Brian Mullen. Mullen. Yeah, I Carol referencing Finger. BM in a, fra- in a thread about Brian Mullen. And then suddenly he decides that it's not Brian Mullen anymore because basically he'd claimed that he could get in touch with him or had got in touch with him. I never claimed I got in touch with Brian Mullen. Yeah, you never could, did. You said you got in touch with BM. No, I didn't. You're so you the got, so, so you got in touch with you got in touch with Bill Miller, did you? Yeah. So you used BM. You used BM on a thread about Brian Mullen. Where was he? And he was using BM. Obviously, everyone's going to assume re- Brian no, Mullen. I've never Why referred Why would you then turn Brian around Mullen and say Bill BM. Miller? Do you think it was yeah, quite funny? I've always used his we name. We saw right I've through you. We saw right through you. There is no Bill I've Miller. Last name is Mullen, or I've referred to him as Brian Mullen. I- Why didn't you correct Wolfie then? When Wolfie, the very next message in the thread that Anthony used, to you, so a comment directed at you, George said Brian Mullen, and you did not correct him. So why didn't you correct Wolfie? I don't get it. Wolfie? Yeah, his immediate message afterwards was about Brian Mullen and about you contacting Brian Mullen, but you didn't correct him. No, it was that retard Jesse Kozlowski. Oh, sorry, no, sorry, you're right. It was Jesse Kozlowski. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. He replied to you by name as a reply, i.e. it says plus... George Netanyahu, and then he spoke to you directly after that message you're talking about with BM in it and said specifically about Brian Mullen by name, and you did not correct him. I didn't read the message. Oh, that's handy. Uh, Oh, right. I don't know. I I don't know what he... I I don't recall. I don't remember what Jesse said or did not say. I don't go around correcting everybody on the uh, message board. What did Bill Miller say to you? (laughs) Regarding what? What was the conversation with Bill Miller about? Oh, it was several months ago. I had a conversation with him uh, on and off about uh, the flat earth, and I uh, showed him where some of the uh, flat earth concepts were wrong, just like I did with Barbie. Remember Barbie? She had about 3,500 subs. Don't worry about Barbie. Just specifically concentrate on the conversation you said you had. Specifically. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to concentrate on... Hold on, Anthony. I want to concentrate on the conversation you had with Bill Miller because you said that you'd had a conversation with him. So I want to know what that conversation specifically was about. I said I've talked to him a number of occasions over the last few months about some of the claims that flat earthers were made, specifically the stuff from um, Eric Dubay and others, and showed him where... He got the physics wrong and where a lot of the stuff was just plain BS. And he came around and uh, saw that a lot of these flat earth videos were just plain wrong. I showed him even uh, Brian Mullen's stuff and how he had totally botched up concepts and physics. And so he started telling some of his fr- flat earth friends and they started getting really nasty. They didn't sorry. want him to leave the fold, just you like didn't what see, happened again, to Barbie. George, Why George, George, I'm really sorry to interrupt property. you. George, you George, you're telling me, you said it three times. I showed him this, I showed him that. My question was about the phone conversation you said you had with him. Tell me about what was said during the conversation on the phone that you detailed in that message. Well, we just talked about uh, his uh, conversion over to uh, uh, leaving Flat Earth behind. So what was said? Yeah. What were the words used by you and him? I don't know con- specifically the words. I didn't record it. No, but you could surely remember you, I can vaguely. Give you the general gist of the conversation. I can't yeah, give, it to give me some of the words word. that were used specifically. The words. Not what you showed him. I can't give you the words specifically. Why not? It's a phone conversation. I can remember a phone conversation that I had several months ago. 
You just vaguely remember the conversation enough to put it in absolutely dozens of YouTube thread comments like it was extremely important. And now you can't remember what the conversation was about. I don't really understand, George. That makes no sense. <sighs> Do you have his telephone number? It. Perhaps we could just give him a call. I was trying to get Anthony's attention. I posted it originally to his thread, and then I wanted to make sure him and the other uh, flat earthers were going to see this just to see what the reaction was going to be. So you were lying. To see lying. if they are going to use, jump to conclusions that I was talking about uh, Brian Mullen or Bill Miller. And yes, you like guys Jesse didn't did. Disappoint me whatsoever. You like Jesse did. Conclusions. You'd, if you'd done proper research and got right, I've asked you about a phone conversation you've had, George, and what was specifically said on the phone conversation. And now you're going to how you were testing other people. It seems to me like the person you duped was Jesse, but you didn't mention anything yes. to him. So well, why yes. would you assert well, that? Yeah. I just, want to, Nathan, I just want to say, Nathan, he's there's a world of difference between Bill Miller hangout, man. and we Brian can't Mullen. Hear right? Right. Brian Mullen is like universally well known on the flat Earth, and you would respond into that in his in his chat. Sorry, not his chat in the, in a in a video about him, right? And when you said that you were trying to trick us by using BM, like we're going, anybody would know Bill Miller. Nobody's even heard of the guy. So when you say we don't do our oh, research, right. we didn't even know who you were. I'm not being funny, mate, but you're nobody anyway. So why would we care about you having a conversation with somebody that we don't know as well? How would we get our research if that was the case? The only person that you made to look an idiot was yourself. Let me ask you a question. Nathan, he's, would you like me to demonstrate gone. I think somebody George sniped to be lying literally right now? I think he's been sniped out of the hangout. Oh, shit. Thank the Lord. Let, let, well, let, let's demonstrate that he's lying about the, um, the, the Jesse Kozlowski comment. Um, if Ranty's able to get up that thread, that was started by Astronomy FE or FE Astronomy. Hold on. Um, if, if I... Hey, God. How you doing? Hey. hey can, you. I, can I ask this George one? Ah, oh, damn it. Is there a sniper in the back chat? Yeah, I can't cope on my own. Fortunately, there's no one, no one helping me in the hangout, so it's just me against the trolls. It'd be great if a few guests from the, the show chat could actually join just to fill up the hangout, just so we don't have to constantly battle with trolls. Oh, I've lost the whole no, thing No, they sniped nah, him for a reason. Mate. We're still here. Oh, cool. They sniped Probably him. sniped him for his own good to stop himself from looking even worse. Yeah, he was getting annihilated. Listen, Ranty, do me a favour. Go to George Nettonuke's channel. Open up the video in, quite in concern, the one that said um, Nathan's wreck, discussing Nathan's wreck, or the Hang show, or whatever. George, how do you even spell his name? George H H N A T. Uh, yeah, I got it. Hey, two-dimensional. How you doing? So I'm looking for a video about what, sorry? In his last couple of videos, it's the one that says discussing Nathan's wreck of a show or something like that. Um, I don't see it. Nothing with that title anyway. Just go back to his last four videos. What are they entitled? Uh, Infinite Grid Update, Electric Network, Swimming with Khan, Capitants Between Two Spheres, Amplifier with Three, Independent sources, superposition super solution, uh, network theory, chain he, source, battery it pack, fireworks it... on Rainy River. Maybe he's uh, has he removed it? it? He must have removed it. Oh, that's okay, because I've got it in my uh, video. But basically, when he said that um, Jesse Kozlowski, when you said, why didn't you correct Jesse Kozlowski in, his last, uh, in the comment immediately below Anthony's, and his response was, because I didn't see it. Well, if you look at the next comment the next comment is george responded to jesse and he didn't correct him so his, oh, his answer right. for him, what you said nathan was not credible so he's just lying again basically yeah <sighs> but is, is that video gone now Ronty? well i'm i can't see the video that you've just referenced so i mean i haven't you really mean... been as close to this conversation as you have so um i'm just doing as you asked and i can't find it let me have a look i'll i'll, I'll put myself on mute i'll come back to you okay Hey Nathan, how are you doing? Very well, who's that? Oh, it's Apollo. How are you doing? Good to have you. Well, not so good. I just tried to format an uh, 80 megabyte MFM hard drive. But unfortunately, it doesn't, uh, doesn't want to format, so that's unfortunate. Heartbreaking. See. Yeah. It's a big full height hard drive. 
So it's massive. If I could, I'd just like to add again one little detail, sort of like with the use of density, but instead with we're using as pressure in airs and gases. The air that we have, our regular atmosphere, contains water. Water, when it's in a liquid form, has a certain volume. When it vaporizes, evaporates, it increases in volume. Evaporating all, water also takes away heat, rises up with it. Where it loses the heat, condenses, drops pressure, and drops rain. It's a cycle. So when, where is pressure coming from? The vapor pressure of water in the air exerts a force. So that's pressure. Hey, where's the, where's the before the verbal diarrhea got going? Where's the guy with the equatorial mount scientific evidence? He got kicked. Uh, did he get kicked? Yeah, unfortunately. Nathan, just to confirm that George Nathan Nuke has removed that video. Um, I've still got the comments that were in that thread. And I'll, when I get home, I'll uh, take your screenshot and I'll send you one. But he's deleted that video, so we're not going to be able to cite this, the reference. But Jessica Zlowski was not corrected. You are quite correct to bring that, uh, bring that question up. And his comment was that he did not see the comments. Well, he did. He directly responded to Jessica. Did you remove the video about forecourt as well? Yeah, of course I did. <laughs> Just making sure. <laughs> Silly ranty. I was half cut when I made that. I realised and thought, oh, shit. But <laughs> yeah, do you know but... what, though? Do you know what, though? This is the difference between ballers and flat earthers, right? Even when faced with the most damning of evidence, George will not admit it to his crimes. Geo Streber will not admit to his crimes. Sean will continue to lie anyway, no matter how stupid the, uh, the position that he maintains is, or the evidence that's against him. But at least when I do something wrong, I'll remove the video. And that is the right thing to do. Okay. Just clearing that up because I don't want people to actually sort of like soundbite that and sort of like say, well, you did it and you haven't admitted it. So good of you for owning that. Owning yeah, up but that I one. can admit, I, I can admit I made a mistake. George is defending his position but has deleted the video. You can't do that. That's a direct contradiction. So you're not going to re-upload it then? <laughs> no. Don't be silly, Ranty. <laughs> okay. What about your Ken Burns video? Has that been deleted, Ranty? No, I think it's still up there, isn't it? It's on my channel. I'm I don't sure know. it is. Well, I know it was on the old channel. I never took it down then either. If I had it, if I have it, it's up. And if it isn't, it isn't. I still stand by that. To be honest, Ranty, I agree with you. You did have a burn. Damn right, I did. Don't y'all think that if, you know, if George would have came out like a man and, you know, yeah. Followed up on what he on, on what he did, and uh, admitted to it. Don't you think that you know people would have had more respect for him? Yeah, yeah. He same with Geo Streber. Yeah, I mean, it it seems like they just they're they're digging the hole deeper. They it just seems like they just don't want to admit it. Correct. Right. This show's been going a long time and I'm tired of trying to kick out trolls. So I'm probably going to kick out this last troll <laughs> and get the round out done. So is there anything anybody wants to add before we do round out this show? Uh, yeah, yeah. Shout, out to, uh, Joey. shout out to Joey in the chat. Yeah, shout out to Joey. Joey's cool. Uh, cool. Shout out to Sean Hufford who's try, trying to trivialise um, the view count, the sub count for Simon Dan. Shout out to Geo Streber who won't admit his crimes, but uh, attacks me anyway. Shout out to uh, George Netanyahu for just trying to destroy a man's career because he was wrong on the internet. And George is a shout out. Shout, shout out. out, retracted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then we can retract all those shout outs. Shout out to Arwin. Shout out to Arwin. What for? <laughs> Arwin. Shout, shout out to Arwin for being the best that the bowlers have got, better than Rumpus and better than Slide. <laughs> cool. Any, anything else? Anybody else? Uh, no, oh, yeah, go to my pay, uh, Patreon as well. You can look me up there. Find me on my channel. Uh, you'll see a video that I put up about my Patreon. If So if you do find, find that you want to uh, help me out with these experiments, I'll be doing. I'll be going live later and explaining some of the experiments I will be doing. So 
uh, yeah, smash that Patreon if you if you feel like you want to support myself and the work that I'll be doing. Oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, I believe Globuses will be broadcasting again in the next hour or two. Make sure you're all in church and you're all ready for communion. Pastor Bob will be hosting tonight's ceremony with uh, Bishop uh, Jaron and uh, what's the other guy's name? Reverend John the Morgan. So that, that's from 8 o'clock British summertime on Globusters. So make sure you're all there for communion. Radius Dominus, Sanctus Spiritus Gravitus, Amen. In our we trust, go in peace. And with that, I will say, first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate. And of course, a massive thank you to all of the the debating panel, if I can say it with a cold, for making this debate possible. If you hated the show, then you know exactly what to do. But if you liked the show, maybe consider sharing it with a friend or subscribing if you've not done so already. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!